into Blender's Cinematic. I've been able to pull off complex destruction simulations in Blender using RBD Lab add-on, and I also started uploading relevant tutorials on this channel. For basic tutorials on this add-on, please visit the RBD Lab official YouTube channel. And the most important uh, videos are Fracture Module, Physics Module, Mesh Visualization Options, and the Constraints Module. If you'd like to purchase the RBD Lab add-on and support the channel at the same time, please use the affiliate link in the description below which allows us to receive a commission at no additional cost to you. Thank you. Here's an example of what we can achieve with the RBD Labs uh, linear destruction workflow. So I took a submarine from uh, Blender Kit add-on and I animated the empty so that it breaches uh, the ice. It moves up a little bit and then falls down uh, so it gives a natural appearance of a uh, submarine breaching the surface and once the basic animation for the uh, submarine is completed i took a cube and scaled it appropriately and then i subdivided it and separated this particular part of mesh so that i can start using the rbd labs linear workflow and i used a scatter density of 3500 and max chunks of 3500 and i fractured the surface and i added a little more detail to the chunks and once the fracture is complete i added uh, i added a ground and i added rigid bodies to these chunks and for this particular uh, project i didn't add any constraints or activators but we can also add them for more uh, organic and realistic look and i bake the rigid bodies to keyframes and then i added the debris and smoke to the chunks that have uh, motion and then i added the collision of the particles to the chunks and collision of particles to the submarine in this collision tab and in the single object collision for the submarine And when we add collision, the bake takes a little longer. Uh, in this project, the bake took about two hours to complete because there are a lot of collision calculations to be done. And then finally, um, I added uh, smoke to the scene so that uh, when the ice chunks fall back on to this ice plane, I wanted the ice dust to fly off uh, from the submarine out into the plane. And here's the viewport render with the rigid bodies, the debris particles, and smoke particles. For the landscapes, I use the ANT landscape add-on that uh, comes with Blender. So the way we activate the add-on is by going to add-ons and then type landscape and this another noise tool landscape and we just click on the checkbox and in the viewport we press shift a and under mesh landscape now if we click on anything else then these settings disappear so before clicking anything else if you would like to change the look of the landscape we can work with these settings so I'm going to go with an operator preset of Mesa. So this gives uh, the IC sort of uh, landscapes. And we can change this to Warnai Crackle for more broken look. And we can change the subdivisions as well, um, depending on the system resources, so that we can get better look. And there we go. So once we have something like this, we can click anywhere and we lose all the options. And then we can scale appropriately. And there's about 200 meters. And then let's add a plane.
and then increase the end to 10,000 meters. And let's duplicate by using Alt D. And move it elsewhere. And then let's bring it down a bit. And then Alt D. And there we go. So once we add a camera, we can just uh, duplicate a few more and then place it in certain locations. So we get that uh, nice icy look. And then for materials for the icy landscapes, I turned the subsurface to 1 and I used a subsurface radius of 0.2, 1 and 1. Uh, I reduced the roughness and then I increased the transmission a little bit. And then I downloaded a rock boulder crack displacement from Polyheaven, which is a free uh, asset. And then I connected the color to the displacement so that I can get some sort of a displacement on the uh, ice blocks. Let's see how to add a very simple icy material. Let's get into rendered view. And this is uh, Nishita Sky Texture. And to this cube, let's add a new material. And then let's increase the subsurface to 1. And we can see a light scattering. And for the subsurface radius, Let's change this to 0.2, this to 1, and this to 1. So we can already see the light glimmering inside the cube. And we can decrease the roughness to something like 0.05 and increase the transmission to 0.25. And there we go. That's our IC look that we were looking for. And for these ice blocks, I also added uh, more subdivisions to it. So we need to be really careful about these subdivisions because it really takes a lot of uh, system resources. Uh, but the more subdivisions, the better it is. We can also use adaptive subdivision. But in this project, I didn't use adaptive subdivision. But uh, if we use adaptive subdivision for these landscapes, it gives a more realistic look.